All right, so we're just gonna we're just gonna talk about some hitting hitting stuff, some hitting drills today, and basic fundamentals of hitting of how we're gonna how we're gonna do things in our program. So, and first first and foremost, purposely these mats do not have batter's boxes lines on them. That's, we got them that way on purpose because the way we line ourselves up when we hit is off the plate, not off the batter's box. Okay, so my left foot is always with this corner of the plate. Okay. So I'm not up here, I'm not way back here, I'm right here in line, front foot in line with this corner of the plate. And how far away I am from the plate should be one, one hand on the bat right here up against the knob and I should be able to reach out and touch that corner. I should be able to touch both corners of the plate right there like that, okay? That's where I stand. If the coach tells you to back up towards the catcher, then you're back. If your coach tells you to back, scoot up towards the pitcher, then you're up a little bit, okay? But every time you come up to the plate, you're standing in the same exact spot right here. So everybody got that? Yeah. Okay. So the other thing is with hitting, with the hitting is I, I like to try to keep everything as simple as possible. Okay. So we're in an athletic position, in an athletic position on the balls of my feet, not on my heels, right? Feet shoulder width apart, a little bend in my knees. Okay. Um, checking myself on the plate. And then I just, I kind of rest the bat on my shoulder right here like this. Okay. And then I'm going to come right up off of there. That's my set, my set position where I'm going to be set at, okay? Another thing to talk about real quick is my hands. I'm not going to be crossing my hands like this. You don't necessarily have to have your knuckles straight like that, but and you don't want to be choking the bat. You, it's kind of loose. You see a lot of players kind of move their hands like this, right? You want to kind of have a little bit of rhythm and stuff, and you don't, don't want to be choking, squeezing the bat too tight, okay? It's, it kind of keeps you calm, keeps you relaxed, okay? So checking myself at the plate and I'm right here. I'm just right up, right up off of my shoulder is all I want to do, okay? And another important thing is I want to step and load the knob of my bat. The catcher will be about right here where his feet are. So another thing I say a lot is point the knob of the bat at the catcher's feet. So I'm starting with everything straight here, knob basically straight down. But when I step and load, which we can call it scap load, whatever you want to call it. You're showing, showing your shoulder a little bit and showing your hip a little bit to the pitcher. You're pointing the knob at the catcher's feet. So very simple. I start here right off, off my shoulder, step load to here, and then I'm trying to be straight down to the ball, okay? So the, the pitcher, when the pitcher is throwing the ball, it's gonna be coming on a downward, downward angle just a little bit, right? The plane of the ball coming in is on a downward angle a little bit. So when it, you hear a lot about like launch angle, stuff like that. I like to talk more about it being like on plane, be on plane with the ball, with your bat, as long as you can. So I'm right here from my load position and I'm trying to get here and stay on plane with the ball. So I wanna be, yes, I have to be swinging upward on an upward angle a little bit. It's a little bit, because the angle of the ball is gonna be coming in down here like this. And I wanna be on plane with it as long as I can. Okay, so I'm staying on plane with the ball here and staying through the ball, through the ball and then coming around. Okay, um, the way I like to describe it to hitters a lot of times is act like there's two baseballs, like you're trying to hit the trailing baseball, right? So if I'm hitting this baseball, act like there's another ball behind it that I'm trying to stay through it and then come around, okay? Um, another good approach to it is if I'm a right-handed hitter, if I'm a right-handed hitter, I should be trying to hit the ball over the pitcher's head or over the second baseman's head as much as possible. Like that's my goal. So a pitch, a pitch down the middle or a pitch on the outside corner, I'm trying to hit the ball over the second baseman's head. That's going to help me stay, keep my hands inside the ball and try to drive the ball that way and then come around. The only time I should be trying to pull the ball if it's a, if it's an inside pitch. Right, if it's inside, the other thing is where, where do I gotta hit, hit the ball at? If it's, in, in if it's inside, yes, we wanna hit the ball out in front. But if it's inside, if it's inside, I gotta hit it way out here, out in front. Okay. Like look how far out in front that is, right? If it's inside. If it's down the middle, if it's down the middle, it's gonna be just basically like right out here, right out, right out in front of the plate, right? Yeah. And if it's outside, out here, I'm gonna let the ball travel a little bit more and hit the ball back here. My contact point is back here to drive the ball that way, right? 
Yeah. Yep. So most of the time with youth, youth pitchers, you think about where are they taught to pitch at? On the outside corner. Mm -hmm. So we want to make the outside corner our strength. That at you guys as hitters, that's what you should want. You should want to make outside pitches what you love because that's what pitchers are going to give you. So you make that what you love and you're good at. It. So that's what you should practice. Driving the ball outside pitches, driving the ball the other way. Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So once again, I'm checking myself here, right? Different contact points we, we already went over, right? So I'll just keep it, keep it simple. You, you know, your head, head is over your toes. Head is over your toes. I'm not leaning backwards, right? Okay, head is over my toes and I'm right here. Good balance. Another good thing to think about is I want to keep my head still, okay? So like in these, these, these batting cages and these nets, if you're standing outside, standing outside that net, you're watching me through one of the little, one of the little squares or one of the little diamonds. My head, my head should stay in one of those little squares or one of those little diamonds throughout my entire swing. So if I'm here, I step load and I swing, you see how still my head is, mm -hmm. right? You gotta keep your head still, which keeps your eyes still, which help, helps you see the baseball better, right? Does that make sense? You can't be, you can't be moving all over the place, okay? And then, so all of those, all those things are pretty, pretty simple things, okay? So once again, review again. Check myself, let front foot on this corner, bat on my shoulder, right up off my shoulder. I step and I load. I wanna be on plane with the angle that the pitch is coming in as long as I can. And the other thing is, that I like to say and tell hitters a lot is finish high, finish up here. I see a lot of kids, they wanna finish down here, down here, you don't wanna finish down here. You wanna finish high up through the ball, okay? Right, does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So keep it, keep it as simple, keep it as simple as possible, work on good balance, being under control. And the last thing I have to say about hitting is you're going up there to compete, right? Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's basically, basically at the end of the day, it's you versus the pitcher. You versus the pitcher and you want to win, right? You want to win that competition and just compete. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I think, the reason I think that baseball is the greatest game there is, is because you've got to learn to deal with adversity. You're going to fail. You're going to fail way more than you succeed. So, I'm big on body language and how we handle that, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to have good body language when things don't go our way, right? Umpires are going to miss calls. So if I'm in the batter's box, if I'm in the batter's box and I got one ball, no strikes on me, right? One ball, no strikes on me, okay? And I'm getting ready to hit and say the ball bounces in the dirt and the umpire calls it a strike. I don't want to see this or like, this or like shaking your head or any of that stuff, right? We're not doing that. You know why? Why? Because umpires miss calls. It's gonna happen, okay? You can't do anything about it, it's out of your control. You can control how you respond to it, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah, he just made a bad call, so what? What's the count now? It's one and one. That's why they give you three strikes, right? You still have you still have a chance still have an opportunity so good body language um same thing same thing if you get out when you hit the ball if you get out with you, when you hit the ball it's going to happen the best hitters in the world hit 300. that means they in 10 at bats they get out seven times seven times out of ten they get out and they fail right they're not crying about it it's it is what it is you go on to the next the next at bat right okay um, so the, another, one last thing real quick is, you know, um, you can't, you can't dwell on what just happened, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Can't dwell on what just happened. You got to go, go to the next at bat, right? Mm -hmm. Because I tell hitters this all the time. You might strike out your first two at bats and be over two with two strikeouts. And then you come up your third at bat and the winning runs on second base and you can get the game winning hit and win the game, do you think anybody's gonna remember that you struck out your first two times? Nope. 